All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to stream. Welcome back. I, I guess welcome back to me. I'm kind of, I'm the one who's back. <laughs> it's been a bit. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this one. This stream that I owe you or have been owing you for the past couple of weeks. I have returned. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome into stream. How are we doing? How are we doing? How does, how do I sound? Do I need to turn me out? Do I need to turn the music down? Let me know, but hello. Hello, hello, hello. I haven't done this in a few weeks. I am <gasps> back again. Yes, I sound good. All right, perfect. How am I? I am alive. <laughs> School year has started for me as well. So I'm back to university. Um, but yes, hello, hello. Welcome in everyone, welcome back. Um, today's, you could have guessed, um, like it says in the title, um, is today's the roasting stream? Today's the stream. Is it raining where I am? No, it's just the music. Um, today's the roasting stream. Pieces have already been picked. If you are wondering, we picked them a couple weeks back because the stream was supposed to happen a couple weeks back. Um, so all of the chosen art has already been there. There's about nine submissions. I don't know if I'll be able to get through them all. Hopefully we will. Um, so we are going to be going through those. I saw a few questions in the, or a few things in the chat that I saw that I want to, um, take into account. This is a roasting stream. It will be const as constructive as I can give it, but there will be some jokes in here, um, because it's a roast. What am I going to do? I'm just going to be like, oh yes, this is very, I'm going to, I'm going to poke fun at some things. Like I sh I'm just going to put that out there immediately. I'm going to poke some fun at some things because there was an option in the form for those who submitted, whether you wanted me to take it easy on you, or if you wanted me to go as hard as I can, every single person in here has made the option of me roasting them as hard as I can. So I will be poking fun of you. I'm also in kind of a funky mood, so I might be a bit meaner than I expect to be, but here we are. Um, but yes, so that is what we are going to be doing. It will be jokes along with some constructive stuff. Me doing a few lessons on the side. Um, and there will also be a... Oh, yeah. Also, there's there's going to be no additional submissions. Like, what I've chosen, that's all I'm doing. Um, credits will be given where credit is due. Every artist has their name listed. I'll be telling them. I'll be um, giving their social media handles, everything. Um, because that's what they wanted. But yes, all right, before we get going though, we gotta do the plugs because if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel. We are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us, we'll keep, we can keep making free content. Consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month or you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone all right this isn't all that we have to get through as well because we're not just doing this we've also got to get through the art submissions yes yes we are going to be going through a whole new theme I believe it was fantastical fan art. I think that this month's theme was all about fan art. So people who submit in the Discord, you'll be able to um, submit your artwork for me to walk through. And I, this time I've only picked five. We've got a fair amount of people who I got to roast. Um, and then I got to kind of poke fun at for a bit. <laughs> but uh, I've, I picked five this time, um, five that I thought were really, really fun. This piece is gorgeous. I adore this line work so much. I also just like, no, why is my brain Hollow Knight <laughs> for a second? I was like, what's the cave again? Um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. I love Hornet in the center. Um, the coloring is gorgeous. The shading is gorgeous. The lighting is gorgeous. Um, credits to Evianon in the discord for this one. This is a gore yeah, it's gorgeous. The like Oz said in there. The the metal, the shines are beautiful. 
the control. It's like, this is a really good example of a piece where you can tell material difference despite them only using cell shading. Because um, you can use cell shading for anything. Um, but it, it, this is a good example of still being able to tell that difference in material with just a very simple shading style. It is beautiful. This is a beautiful uh, piece. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right. Next one is by Key K in the Discord. Um, happy Splatoon Day, everyone. <laughs> um, oh, shoot. I hit my, my desk. I'm sorry. Um, I love Marina. I love her. Um, this is beautifully rendered, though. I love the, the vibrancy in this piece. The the, the blending, the, the use of the... It, despite this being like super vibrant and being quite chaotic for what it is, it is a very intentionally chosen. Like these colors are very intentionally chosen. They're very, very um, intentionally picked, and it's it's a it's a really, really beautiful kind of messy style. I I really love this. It it blends like cohesiveness with a mess behind it, which I really love. It's a it's a it's a painting style that I really want to get into, um, but I struggle with a lot because I'm just very, very clean um so i just like i try to force myself to bring more mess into stuff but like i can't do it right now um but yes happy splatoon day splatoon 3 came out i haven't played it yet um and i really want to i just won't be able to play it till like next week and i'm super mad about it um all right next piece though thank you for submitting this is beautiful next piece this is by on um on the discord once again soul eater i don't remember the name of this character but this is a really really fun one it's like a screen cap redraw if i had to guess um but this is a beautiful this is not the roast portion guys i this isn't the roast portion this is what we do every single stream where we go over the proper things but this is the this is a beautiful piece i i love the line work i love the the sharp shading i'm a really big fan of cell shading it's just what i do most of the time um but I love like the subtle gradients that kind of break up the single tone color. Um, I love the line variation. This is a really clean piece. Gorgeous. When's the rose portion? When we're done with this. <laughs> it's immediately after we go after the, um, the submissions for the Discord. It'll be happening soon. I only chose five for that for that specific purpose. Next piece that we are going to be going. Oh, sorry. I haven't streamed in two weeks. I'm like, I <laughs> I just don't remember how to do any of this. Oh, hi. Hi, Kay. Welcome in. Um, but yes, this is a really good one. Um, thank you, Anzair, for submitting. Gorgeous stuff. Next one, Skylar Mixtape. I, I, first of all, Adventure Time. Very fun. Uh, second of all, I, this is on a sidewalk. Wow. I love, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I love sidewalk art this is like really really gorgeous really really innovative um i haven't worked i don't work in chalk very much i just like i just really appreciate it um part of me wants to get into chalk and then i don't um but i love this i love how like smooth it is i love that i love the like the fact that when you do chalk art it won't remain forever i think that's really cool it's like a very because if it rains or somebody washes off the sidewalk and then it's gone right and i think that that's really cool it's kind of very similar to uh when people do um like sand art or something um but it's this is a really 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 gorgeous piece is it made with spray i'm not sure i'm i'm pretty sure this is chalk i'm pretty sure skylar said that this is chalk before um yeah yeah that's what i thought but yeah this is a really really beautiful one well done. Excellent work, Skylar. And I think we have one more. Yes! Vinouye with the Hunter Hunter coming in clutch. I had a huge Hunter Hunter phase back at the end of 2020. Like, it was from October of 2020 to January of 2021. I had just, like, this intense Hunter Hunter obsession, so I'm kind of biased. Um, but I love this piece. They, it's, it's really fascinating. And, like, I can't zoom in, but um, you'll actually notice that there's no line waiting. All of the lines are the exact same width. And it, this is a really good example of being able to do that style and not let it overtake. Because if you notice, a lot of like the smaller, finer details are done 
in color. They're not done with line. There's actually a very, very small amount of lines. And a lot of those lines that are within there are colored. So it's like, it's not overpowering. So there are ways where you can work with no line work or with no line waiting. You just have to be careful about it. Um, and this is a really good example of that beautiful like harmony between uh, not having um, or having a lot of detail, but it not being too overcrowded. Like this is a crowded piece, but it's in a way where it feels balanced and feels like strong. I think that's a, that's the best way that I can put it. I really, really love this. I love the expressions, love the anatomy. And also just like the orange multiply layer. It's just, you can't go wrong with it. <laughs> but there we are. And there we are. Thank you so, so much, everyone. Thank you for the submissions on the Discord. Brilliant. Once again, thank you to Evanon, Key or K, I'm sorry, Onzer, Skylar Mixtape, and Vinny Gay. All right. This means that it's time to get to the roasting. Yes. Yes. Indeed. I do hope that you all notice, know that, like, the more that you prod me, I am doing very mid today. <laughs> So I'm like, let's see here. Should I just open these all up at once? Yeah, let's do that. Let's see. If, let's hope they open up in order. Oh, you know what? I probably shouldn't have done that. Let's let's do this this way. So then I can have. I should have set this up better. All right. I should have set this up a little bit better. That's okay. Give me a moment. All right. So we've got about nine here. Okay. We've got about nine different pieces. I handpicked them. I picked them myself. And I wish they existed IRL. These are my IRL headphones. Um, if you want them, they're the Logitech G733s, um, with cow ear attachments. They're real. Um, we're gonna get to the roasting. Again, for the people who I picked, I am gonna poke fun at you. Just putting that out one more time. But there will be, um, ordering that right now. They're beautiful. Um, they're also wireless. I'm not sponsored by Logitech, but they're, they're wireless. They're really, really nice lightweight headphones. Um, Oh, also, I I hate to, to, like, I've already announced it in the Discord, that's why I'm not afraid of saying it. Um, everybody who is being roasted was contacted beforehand. So, for their consent to be on stream, just putting that out there, if you were not contacted, I apologize, you're not in the stream. Um, I already put that on the Discord, just saying that right now. But, if you were contacted, then you know. Um, but all right, corn. Everybody loves corn. <laughs> there he is. There's my boy. Um, please don't spam the chat. I know we all love corn, but let's not. All right, let's get to. Oh wait, where are they? There they are. Because I have all the info for everybody's stuff on this side here. All right, this is the first piece by Void Tribe. Uh, gremlin.org on socials. I believe that's Instagram. I believe that's Instagram. If I remember correctly, I don't think, I don't know if they specified. Right. Okay. Let me, okay. Where do I start? So <laughs> let's, let me, let me, let me, okay. Here's, here's, here's my, here's, Okay, when we have pink and green together, right? Pink and green, super, super, or red and green, super, super contrasting colors, right? You got this highlighter green, you got this highlighter red, all right? You can use them together if you want. You can totally use them together. Just don't burn my eyes off if you're gonna be doing this, okay? If you put like a like a bright green right next to like a bright pink, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to wear sunglasses, okay? It's like I'm looking at digital arts the digital arts sun also this i hate this gradient like i really don't this this whole center thing i know what you're doing it's like the, the flipping kind of thing i feel like 
I feel like this whole section here, unnecessary. Very unnecessary. You've also got a tangent back here. You're carp carping this off. Also, this font sucks. Um, but I feel like, I feel like if you are going to use green with a pink, right? And you want to keep it at this saturation, you need stuff in between it. Or else what you're going to be causing is something that like it, it just makes your eyes burn it just like i love using green with pink that's a thing that i love but you're gonna have to tone down that saturation like a lot like this this feels like i'm losing my mind just staring at it right like i love pink and green together but this is too much this is so much right uh this outfit i also feel like it came straight from like the scene kid era of like early 2000s i just there's so much i guess it's kind of coming back if you think about like alt tiktok girls but like i just don't i say this as a more alt person i'm just kind of losing it looking at this all right if you're gonna have this green can let me let me let me let me do this for you so oh also hang on before i continue before I continue, right, let me talk a bit about the submissions that I saw. Okay, a lot of those submissions on the on the Excel sheet, right? I got a giant Excel sheet, over 200, 300 submissions, something like that. I'm pretty sure there was more because I chose the pieces kind of midway. But it, it, a lot of you guys were like, oh, I submitted this and it's like, it kind of sucks and I want to don't tell me that <laughs> that is that is you immediately putting yourself down. And it is going to create this thing where it's like, oh, I mean, like, I, I submitted this, but it's really not that great. But I'm like, do you think I'm going to go easier on you if you tell me that? All right. I'm going to like, I am going to go harder on you. It's like, I hate hearing that. That is the number one thing that I absolutely despise is when people are like, oh, it's like, I can do this and I draw this, but I don't really like it. I kind of hate it. Here's, here's the thing. When you tell me that, all I am hearing, everything that I am hearing right now, right is all i'm hearing is you like attention seeking that's all that i hear right you're just telling me like oh it's like i submitted this here but like i hate it why would you submit it if you don't like it own yourself own your own your, like how much you like something if you like your piece just say it right it doesn't make you less of a person you can be proud of what you've done right i don't hate half of my pieces like, I like a lot of my work. I dislike some of my work. That's fine, right? If, is my hair dyed like, like that IRL? It is sometimes. <laughs> it used to be. It's different now. But I think, like, I think, like, if, if you, like, automatically go, like, oh, I hate my work, and you say it all the time, first of all, you're going to wreck your own, you're going to wreck your own relationship with art, and then you're going to make everybody else feel like, like, they shouldn't compliment you ever because if they do or you're gonna guilt trip everybody into complimenting you right i hate it i hate hearing that also the people who decided to submit and go like can you like design the outfit for this or like can you choose the name for this character no i'm not gonna do that i'm not your mom i'm not your mom and i'm also not like i don't know you i'm not gonna choose it for you there's something called a random name generator all right just pick a name like you know pick a name from a name there's baby name generators if you want a fantasy one there's fantasy name generators you will find it you will find it all right i'm not your mom i'm not your teacher well i guess i am <laughs> i'm kind of like your free teacher i guess but i'm not gonna do it for you okay all right that's out of the way i'm sorry you can kind of tell that i'm a bit ir irritated today Let's take this palette though. What do we have here? Let me take the main, let me take the local values that I see in here, right? If you don't know what a local value is, a local value is a color, um, is the color of something without thinking about the shading or the value, right? If you look at like the local value of something, you are thinking about what that color is um, under specific lighting or without any lighting attached. That's what your local value, local color is, right? Let's take this for a second. I'm going sicko mode. Yeah, no, I am. I have a lot of pent up anger right now. Where you can you can submit your art? The submissions are closed. It says in the description. All right, let's take this palette. Let me take like the major local values right now. All right, we've got this. We've got this. This yellow is so unnecessary. I would have not added yellow at all. What this yellow does is it breaks up the comp, like the color, in in, in, in its entirety. Right? It, it like it. But it's not really echoed enough, so it's like you just have this one concentrated area of yellow, and it's so unnecessary. Alright. 
So let's take this color palette, right? Pink and green, great. You have this kind of like, you can use pink, you can use green, sure. You can use them next to each other. Putting them directly on top of something, if you have like this and then have this like pink directly on top of it, that's so bright. And especially because you only have that, you have nothing else breaking that up. If you were to say like, take this green, if you really wanted to use this highlighter green for the tail, which by the way, don't but if you really wanted to use this highlighter green for the tail you really wanted that pink there either get another really bright color to kind of break that up you could get like a blue or you can get like a like a deeper kind of teal if you really wanted to break that up just a little bit it makes it feel a little bit nicer it's a smoother transition from one on the other right because right now this is like painful but overall, I just would not use this color combination at all. I think it's like, it's just like, it's it's hard on the eyes. It's rough to look at. There's a reason why you never see this color combination used exclusively, right? It's either got to be used in moderation or it's just got to be used not at all. If we're going to keep this green here, I would recommend shifting it to the blue and then dulling it down like that. If you really wanted to keep that there. Or what you could do is you could switch this pink and make it pastel. That's actually quite nice. If you've ever seen Arizona tea, same color combination, if you think about it. it. I personally think that you should keep the accents that same dark. You can make this lighter if you really wanted to shift it towards the blue. Again, pastel, nice pastel tail. And then like the leopard bits, still vibrant, still perfectly vibrant. If you wanted to keep that, but now it doesn't kill your eyes as much, right? You can make it nice and vibrant if you really, really want to. I have nothing against the dark skin tone. I think that like a dark skin tone with very bright colors is a perfect combination. I love that a lot. But if you have it where everything feels like, I also don't care if you're like, oh, it's a hyper pop style. I don't care, okay? I also like everybody, like, I need to organize myself for a second. I'm getting a little bit heated. If we have, like, hyper pop is, like, I don't mind hyper pop. But, like, if you want to get that really bright, like, it's not like they're picking all willy-nilly. They are picking with purpose. Why well, have the tail and not the ears? I mean, it depends. It might just be an attachment. I don't know this character. But, yes. Also, this hair is getting cut off by the hood here. It feels like the hair is just an extension of something. And it's not actually connected to the top of the head. I'm going to add that in there as well. Um... How long have I spent on this? All right, I think I'm, I'm good on this one. Less is more. That's my my main takeaway for this one. Hyper pop is a, it's a, it's a quote unquote new genre of music. If you ever wanted to really take that in. All right. This one by Snappy or Snappy Storm on DeviantArt. She submitted this one. She submitted like five pieces, five or six. And she was like, you don't have to do all of them. Just pick one and then roast it. Here's the thing. I wasn't going to pick all six anyway. A bunch of these guys have picked, have, uh, like submitted like five or six pieces. Some dude submitted like 20 pieces. Do you think I'm going to look through every single one of these? It's not happening. It's not happening. I'm not going to do that. All right. Do you know how many submissions are there? Two or three? Fine. Maybe even six. Fine whatever if you submit to me an entire bible's worth of pieces i'm gonna look through at one of them and then just like move on at one point at one point i just i'm gonna be totally frank with you guys at one point i had gone through maybe 150 of the submissions and i was like you know what i'm just not even gonna look at all of them anymore if they have submitted more than one i'm just gonna like click on one of them and if it leads me somewhere great some people submitted me drive folders that I couldn't open. All right. Learn to use Google Drive, please. Everybody uses it. Okay. <laughs> All right. But let's, let's get into the, let's, let's, I, hang on. Let me actually save these for you guys, for the people who want them. Let's close this off. All right. Okay. Where do I start? Where the heck do I start with this? All right. I, okay. Not all illustrators are graphic designers. Not all graphic designers are illustrators, right? I, I, one of my biggest, I'm not 
uh, I'm not like a type person. Like I don't, I don't study typography or anything like that, but I have a very basic knowledge of what fonts look good and what don't. If you submit anything to me with a script serif, serif font and have it so then it's like the full sentence doesn't even fit on the one line. I'm gonna lose my mind, okay? I don't understand it. And then it's like you have like, it's in the corner and I'm just, I, uh, there's no composition to it. It's like, it's just in the corner, it's there. Also, you know at the beginning how we saw that really nice Hunter Hunter piece and it's like there's no line waiting and like it's a really good example of the no line wait. So this is a not great example of the no line waiting, right? All the lines are just kind of single form. They don't really add anything. There's no real personality to it. I feel like I'm just looking at like a, like a very, very quick- Oh my god, it fades into here. Alright, well. Okay, when you fade into a blur, you're blurring it so then people don't really notice. The mistakes that you make, if you smudge it and blur it and then just kind of leave it so then it's like there's only one like foreground within the entire piece, people are gonna notice this, okay? This isn't like something where I'm like, oh, it's like they blurred it and it makes it like, I still see it. I, st I still see what I'm looking at, right? It's not like it's a background where I can like blur. I also don't understand this background. I don't get it. If I am looking at this, right, we have like this bright blue to this blue. Is it supposed to be like nighttime? Am I supposed to be like, is it supposed to be like a whole like nighttime thing? And is it like, Jesse, when this stream is done, do something relaxing. <laughs> I wish. Um, I have more work to do after this. Um, here's another pet peeve of mine. Here's another pet peeve of mine, right? When people drop patterns into fur, Totally fine. I like patterns and fur. I like it. If you are going to draw patterns and fur, what you need to do is you need to make sure that it follows the mold of the face. Right now, this feels like you've drawn patterns on top of a paper cutout, right? We're not looking at paper cutouts. We're looking at a piece. We're looking at forms. You don't want to think about shapes anymore. We are drawing forms now, right? This muzzle right here, the snout. Let me, let me, let me do this real quick. This is how I do my students' feedback. This muzzle right here, it has form to it, right? I do appreciate you attempting to make the, the noses feel front-facing. It does still kind of feel like that post where somebody has, like, the picture of the wolf and the caption is, like, it's my art style and the nose looks like this. And the thing, like, you know... <laughs> There's a, there's a difference between intentionally messing something up and then also, and then like, you know, just messing it up, right? If you have like, again, there is four, I would have also put this nose up here. If we have, because like right now the snout is all the way down here, right? And then it kind of ends right here. And then it's attached to this entire shape right here, right? I'm not, I like, if you have this kind of form, right here make sure that everything kind of follows it you need to know the planes of your face if you've got like a cat's face right i'm assuming this is cats a bunch of y'all were saying this is warrior cat so i'm assuming that that's what this is if we have like the shape of a cat here all right we're facing this way we've got the snout right here which for some reason is super down low on the face right if we have like the nose right here they should kind of start to curve around the face here it also just kind of ends I feel like it should be blended more into here. If we have this kind of at the top of the head here, rather than just making it like flat on the face, curve it so it matches the head, right? We want to curve these designs so they feel like they're part of the face rather than being stuck on. Also, these eyes. We have eyeballs, not eye triangles, right? There's a lot of these things where I'm like, oh my God, we have like, where people are like, I'm going to draw like my eyes and they're going to be, you know, like if we have, oh, we've got one coming up that's like this actually. If we've got like a head here and then the eyes are like this and then we've got like these giant eyelashes like this and it's like this and the mouth is like this. I hate this. I despise this and I hate it even more when it's like the, the bangs are completely covering the eyes and then you can see the entire eye behind it, right? I know there's another artist who said that they hated this and like when I first heard it I was like no you know it's just like it's it's artists just kind of learning that there's a reason we don't see that anywhere <laughs> there's a reason we only see that with new artists right right now this eye if we think of it as if this whole thing was an eyeball 
the eyeball goes this large. And right now what we have is the eyelids going like this. I don't know anybody's eyelids who do that, right? It's an eyeball. It's a form, right? If we have eyelids, we want to make sure that they are going around the form of the eye, right? We talked about this. We talked about how eyes work, right? So if we were to draw this character who has like more lidded eyes, or even if they're like more upset, you can have like the top ones kind of curving downwards more if you wanted to keep them this large i would never make them this large but you know whatever to each their own i suppose i've been using this one a lot let's move down here uh the ear disappears here i guess that's the main thing also this form right here makes no sense it's like we have the head right here all right we've got the full head right here and we've got one ear attached up here Kind of like right here if we've got another ear that ear should also start up here if it folds downwards it'll probably still be a little bit visible oh it's over here wait hang on hang on okay so if we have the ears behind the head i just noticed it it's back here no okay so if we have if we have if okay okay my head is in my hands right now so if we have this ear, because right now we have it, so the face is on the front here. Why is this ear coming all the way back here like this? All right. Thank you for the two dollars, my Kitsune. Rip wolf snout, so true. I think this is a cat, actually. I I can't tell you. I could not tell you. I've never read Warrior Cats. I was a Wings of Fire kid. I was a Wings of Fire and Percy Jackson kid. There was a Wings of Fire piece. This person submitted a Wings of Fire piece, but I was like, you know what? I want to look at this one more. <laughs> But why is the ear back here? Okay, if we have the ears on the sides here, the face better be a side profile, right? Where do we play? All right, everybody. Where do we place our ears? Where are our ears on our faces? They're not both on this side, are we? We're not Peppa Pig, right? We don't have both our ears on the one side. It's the same thing with cats, besties. If we've got our ears, right? It's not gonna be... It's not... It's not... It's... I hate everything. So, if we have this, right, we're not going to place it here. If you want the other ear bending backwards, what I recommend, if you are struggling with the perspective of any body type, any body part, right, think of the face, think of the shape of the face first, where would those ears go? We've got one over here, the other one has to start here, right? If we want them folding backwards... You better be damn good at, like, what's it called? Foreshortening, because these ears are foreshortened if you are looking at them directly from the front, right? If you want them folded backwards. If you want them folded to the side, you want to go the anime girl route, you could do that. You could have them like this, too. That's still technically correct. I, like, I mean, technically correct if you really wanted to do that. Like, you could do a Scottish fold kind of thing if you wanted. Have the ears folded like this. Like Ludwig's cat, if you really wanted to. But... Like, I... This this is a no. Also, these eyes... Oh, I guess if you have the... I guess if you have the shape of the face, then it's like... It's like this. If you wanted the axis of the face to be like this, okay, then if one ear is here, then the other one should be down here. There is no way that this ear reaches all the way over there. You see this a lot with newer artists. There is... They avoid... You guys avoid foreshortening so much. You do nothing but avoid foreshortening, and that's basically what it is. <laughs> Right? You do nothing but avoid foreshortening. Don't avoid it. Learn it. Learn it. There's like, I have, there's gonna be, like, spoilers for the ones that are coming up. There's one person who submitted and was like, I'm too lazy to do line art, so I only submitted sketches. What do you mean? If you want to do only sketches, that's fine. If you tell me that you're too lazy to do line art, if you want to be a professional artist, that's not going to cut it. You decide to go and be a background artist, you're like, sorry, I submitted line art because I was too lazy to do my coloring. That's not going to cut it, okay? So don't avoid foreshortening. Don't avoid anything that you need to learn, right? Learn where everything is meant to go. Learn this. If this head is also tilted this way, then you're going to want to change where the fluff goes. It's up here. This makes it feel like just this entire composition, though, it feels like I am looking at an old, like, like an old novel from like the early 2000s 
Two Sisters Torn Apart is perfect for this composition. It does feel like an old novel from the 90s that, like, has, like, probably one of the worst synopses that I've ever heard. But I'm like, you know, also, let me, let me talk a bit graphic design for you. This word right here, where you have, you have this full sentence. If you want this full sentence here, it's supposed to be two sisters torn apart, right? The apart should go back up here, or you can have torn down here if you really want, right? I'm the type who doesn't really like a lot of text on art pieces. I am a comic artist, so I put text on a lot of my pieces. But if you just have like a title there, I hate song lyrics on a piece. I hate song lyrics on a piece. If you like draw somebody like in their composition, they're staring at the moon and there's like airplanes by Bob in the background. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at, I don't care. But like this word right here, this is called, um, I think it's called a widow, if I remember correctly. When you have a single word at the end of a sentence or at the end of a paragraph and you just have it on a separate line, right? So if we just have this one word here, this is the word, like you want to avoid these at all costs. You want to avoid these at all costs, right? <laughs> Widows and orphans. Thank you, Joanne. So if you have like this single line here, oh, everybody say hi to Joanne. Um, one of our newer mods. Say hi and thank you to Joanne. Um, but if we have this word here, right? All on its own. It's awkward. It's an awkward composition. It's an awkward placement, right? <laughs> Never do that. Never do that. Also, I hate this font. A, I am a big, I'm a, I've already said it. I'm a, like, I'm not a typographer, but I'm a big, like, font person. It's so easy to look up different types of fonts and where to place them, right? It's so easy. It's so easy to figure that out, right? I read maybe for, like, five minutes and I was able to figure out at least, like, the, the, the dead basics, but having it on an angle like this in this really intense, distracting background and like, I see what you were trying to do. You don't have this dark outline here so that it doesn't clash with the background. Have this light bat line here so it doesn't clash with the background. How about you just don't have this background? Crazy. I know. It's intense. Right? It's a crazy thought incredible right if you're gonna have like a gradient color background make it a gradient all right don't just have it so then you're like you have like this white that's here this this like light blue that's here all right what you're gonna do instead let me What you're going to do instead, if you really wanted to keep these colors, first of all, I wouldn't, but if you really wanted to keep these colors, you're going to blend them in properly so that they're not like super intense and crazy. Also get rid of this texture. I hate this. If you're going to like nab it, so then like just make it nice and smooth. If you really wanted to add in the gradient, right? Already this looks a lot nicer. Again, I wouldn't. <coughs> Oof, sorry. I'm allergic to bad gradients. So if we have like this in here, these colors are so jarring next to each other. Right? If you really wanted to bring it out. Thank you. Smooth it out. A lot less distracting. A lot less annoying. I'm just going to get rid of this text too. I hate this. And we're just going get, to get rid of this. It's starting to flow. I don't realize why it's like at a 30%. Right? I don't like gradients much anyway. Like, I don't like adding gradients. If I add a gradient, then it's got to be subtle. Like, as a background, if you add a gradient, it's got to be a nice and subtle, like, easy background to get by. Right? Like, this is a lot softer on the eyes. It does need a texture. It for sure needs a texture. But just adding random splotches is not how you do it. You got to make sure that it's intentional. And you got to make sure that you are making it so it's part of this much neater composition. All right? All right, I spent way too long on this one. Let's move on. We've got like seven more to go through. Also, the art lacks shading. That's not a thing I was going to point out because I think that if not every piece needs shading, that's another thing. Like not every piece needs line weighting, not every piece needs shading. You just need to be 
mindful of how you shade and mindful of how you put your stuff in there. You can, you can do so much to, without shading. Like, you don't necessarily need it, but you can have it. All right? All right. Number three, pasty soap. On YouTube, pasty soap, one word, on YouTube, he, him, all right. I wasn't given a name. Vinny, all right, let's talk about fonts again. Why does this look like, um, Comic Sans's hideous uncle, all right? A written font, a written font is fine, but if you have a script font, you should not be using it on a character sheet. That's the number one thing. A character sheet, having this on here, not great. Not a great idea. Comedy created, you miss your art? You did not. You're later on, my friend. Um, I hate this font. <laughs> if you are doing a, let me, let me give y'all a tip real quick. Let me give y'all a tip. If you are doing any sort of concept work with a concept page, a character sheet, you are using a sans serif minimalist font, all right? It is the best looking font. It is the best one that you want to use. Um, Railway is a great one. Um, some people use Calibri. I don't recommend it, but you can if you want. It's just Calibri is so, like, recognizable. Um, Moon 2.0 is a nice one. If you have... You like the font? No, I can't deal with this. I just, I guess I just hate script, like written fonts. Um, I just, I don't know. But let's, let's do a fun little thing here. Where's the right? It's in the mouth. Let's do a fun little thing here. Let's whoop. Oh, nope. I'm not tabbed into this place. Let's whoop. There we go. All right. My guy's really pulling a Michael Jackson here. He's leaned back. <laughs> He is leaned back, besties. And we got, like, we got that angle right here. Alright. When we do any kind of character sheet, it's nice to have a thing here. If we were doing a character sheet, you must, the most likely want to turn around, right? That means a perfect half view, perfect full frontal. You can have a three-fourth, you can have a pose, right? This is fine, but it feels like I've slapped a sticker onto a bright yellow background. I actually don't mind the colors. The colors are fine. I'm just... Like, it feels like everything is just placed in a very, very awkward position. You have so much negative space right here that should be filled in a bit better. Concept sheets... Concept sheets are something that I don't think people understand need so much compositional effort. This is called layout design. If you want to lay out a concept sheet, you need to make sure that your spacing is adequate. You need to make sure that it is interesting to look at and it leads the eyes around, right? Right now, we start right here. We start with Vinny and I don't know where to go from here. There's no intention behind this composition. There's no intention. It just kind of feels like we've got two expressions up here that are both kind of flat, if you really think about it. Push your expressions, man. This feels like, I don't, this feels like meh. And then, like, slightly angry. Push it. Make it more interesting. If you are doing an expressions sheet, right, at the, like, at the baseline, this feels like this and like this. Right? These are not crazy expressions. If you want an interesting set of expressions, you can have this meh. You can make it more meh. Change the head angle. Have it so maybe if you had the head looking upwards, right? All of these are at the same flat plane. They're all looking forwards. All right, I feel like... <laughs> yes, thank you, Joe Road. Sans Serif. So that's why it's called Comic Sans. It is a comic font without serifs. Sans Sweep. Right? You can have this meh face... You can make it be even more interesting if you had the face angled upwards. You also have ears. You have these big floppy ears. Ears are such a huge part of emotion, especially with anthro characters. If you are gonna have an anthro character in there, utilize these ears to the fullest extent. You can have this face facing downwards. 
snarl. Get those teeth in there. A character sheet is meant to show off the character. Change the pupil size. Change the brows. Make this character feel alive. Coil those ears back. Make them really folded. Different head angles. Just changing a little bit. Is this a cat? I don't think this is a cat. This doesn't seem like a cat to me. Right? I don't think this is a cat. This looks like a wolf to me. Also, I'm sorry. I'm really not reading chat. I'm kind of just... I'm trying to get, catch my flow here. Oh, here's another pet peeve of mine. Why did you line every single section of fur? Why would you do that? It makes it all feel so heavy. Then again, you didn't really add much else, so I guess it needs that heaviness. But, like, if you have, like, different sections of fur, it looks a lot nicer if you just don't outline it. It's a lot neater if you leave the patterning to just color. It's a nice and easy... Like, it's less work on you. It's less work. Just don't add patterning to everything. Oh, there's more than... There's more colors. There's more colors. <laughs> See, these... They're having... They're being, like, a fair amount of, like, different browns here. Isn't too bad because it is just brown. <laughs> Look at that. Already. Without. With. See? Much better. It's like, it's much more cohesive. It's much more, it's much less busy. Not everything needs lines, besties. Not everything needs line work. Sometimes it looks nicer because it draws attention away. Thank you. It draws attention away from the main character because then it feels like you're sectioning off sections that don't need to be sectioned off, right? And it's it's so much easier if you just don't line patterns. Do you see any patterns on wolf's fur, my guys? Right? You look at it like you don't see any line work on wolf's fur. There is that chicken that has line work on all of its feathers. It's like uncolored. I think that's pretty crazy looking. But think about any kind of like like animal in real life they don't have line work on their patterning right they don't have any line work on there you know the legs are longer than the average life expectancy it could be see like my brain's like maybe this is a maid wolf and like it's meant to be like long legs i don't know i don't know fur blends in nature yes joe very true it's a lot more it's a lot smoother when you have that like think of like a lot of like just general fur drawings like you don't necessarily you d never see like every single section of patterning lined it just looks a lot nicer if it's not it feels a little bit less hefty this is one of those pieces where it's like less is more also when you're doing in color like thingies if you're doing these you don't need to add the color for the inside of the mouth unless if it's something like crazy like if you had like like the tawny frog mouth's mouth which is like a bright green then sure but like if you just have like normal like red and pink like whatever man do i know the name of the chicken i don't actually you can look it up though like line art chicken i think that's like what most people know it as <laughs> main wolves true you yeah, know i love main wolves they are they're really really great creatures um but yes overall this is fine. I don't I don't love it. I think I think like if you Here's the thing is that a lot of art that you'll see is perfectly average. This is fine. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's all right. There's a certain point when art reaches a state of amazing. I don't think mine has reached that yet. I think I'm pretty damn good, but I don't think I'm amazing, right? There's a state when, or I can't keep up the amazing consistently. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. But like the there's a point where art reaches this this like feeling of it being like incredible right this feels like because like i always say like less is more this needs more this needs more it feels like it's half finished right especially with like a with a concept page it's not shaded there's no there's no extra poses right it needs more because right now you've given me two expressions and the character there um 
I don't know what it looks like from the other side. I couldn't tell you um, what it looks like from above. I couldn't tell you half of these things. A character sheet needs more, right? A character needs a character sheet needs more, and you need to have enough information in there for the artist to know what they're doing, right? All right. That's enough for this one. Let's move on. Some of these, I might just keep it salty. This shipment base is salty. We love the salt. Yeah. Some of these, I'm going to spend a lot more time on than others. This one, I, there wasn't too much to say, but there's more. Ooh. All right. This is going to be a fun one. Okay. There's one in here that I'm extremely... Okay. There's one in here that I could have picked. I won't say which one it was. Because, like, if I do, then it automatically calls out the person. But if I if I picked that one piece, I would have been on the, I would have been on that singular piece for like half an hour. It wouldn't have been it would have it wouldn't have been constructive. I would have just been roasting it so much. There was just one piece that like I saw it and I felt like crying. I I I think I think I laughed really hard. I think I laughed for like ten minutes straight and was just staring at it and i didn't i didn't pick the piece the one piece i didn't pick it because i was like all right i feel like this might offend some people or it just it might it might just feel like so ridiculous and i might just only pick fun at it and i don't want to do that i know this is a roast stream but i don't want to like i didn't want to pick it can we get much higher <laughs> was it chip art no there was no ship art, actually. Congrats to all of you. Um, there was no ship art, but there was there were some that I was very confused by. And I was like, why did you submit this? All right. Oh, man. There were some submissions. I, I was sweating going through the submissions. I was sweating. None? Yeah, no. None that I know of anyway. Like, I mean, there were some that was like romantic pieces, but it was like of their characters, which is like whatever... I also personally don't mind ship art. Like, I know a lot of people are like, I hate ship art. I personally don't mind it. I think it's fine. I've done my fair share of ship art, whatever. But it's like... <laughs> Just need some submissions. True, not true. Welcome in, by the way. Um, But there was one that was just so ridiculous. I don't think... I think... I think I... I think I lost a couple brain cells when I looked at it. Um... Some of the people who submitted, by the way, it was like, I looked at their pieces. I had nothing to roast. I was like, you guys are better than me. I don't know why you're submitting. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't roast this. I straight up can't. Like, there's things I could say, but I feel like a hypocrite because I can't do it either. It was a lot. There was, there was, it was, it was, it was the strangest medium. It was the strangest subject matter. I just, I, I've never seen it before. And I was so, like, anyway, let's move on. Um, you did submit a ship art. Why'd you have to delete that? <laughs> Lost Kid, your style is great. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, hey, I'm welcome in. The more you talk about, the more curious I am. I can't, I can't. If I, if I... If I say exactly what it is, it automatically outs the person. It does. Alright. I said I'm anxious about my art. Okay. No, you're fine, kid. I've seen your work. You've been in the beginning, haven't you? Alright. Let's take a let's take a let's take a gander at this one, lads. Okay. This one by Fox. She submitted this one. She didn't give me a social media handle. I just got Fox. <laughs> All right. What? 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 Where to start? I think there's a lot of these. Where I'm just like, where do? I, where do I? Where do I start? Okay. Um. Colors. You're right. These colors are a lot. I. <laughs> okay. Sunsets. First of all, I hate sunsets. Second of all, if you were gonna be doing a sunset. May please, please, the please get the shading right. This kind of sunset, I'm poking my tablet screen right now. This kind of sunset should cause golden hour, right? This doesn't feel like golden hour. This feels like I'm in midday, right? Let me, let me, let me take a get. This feels like 
like this shouldn't be there shouldn't be like a girl with like a like a metal whip in the front it feels like there should be a wolf howling at the moon behind it and it should be on a t-shirt that i find in the middle of nebraska right i don't know what i'm looking at here okay we're, we're gonna get to the anatomy guys i know i should maybe i should have pointed that out first but let's take let's take a second with this sunset right this sunset is so much, okay? Sunsets are not just, it's blue, and then it's orange, right? Idea, what big guys you have. <laughs> True, Joe. <laughs> let's say we took a, let's we take a gander here. Um, let's say we start with the darkest part of the sky, right? You're gonna have this kind of pale darker you're gonna have this kind of pale because if you think of the night sky it's gonna be like that you can then fade into a bit of like maybe you've got a bit of purple in there a bit of purpley magenta right if you really want to go like that length you can right if you got a bit of that in there and then you're gonna kind of jump straight into the oranges you're not really gonna have any of this blue left there Right, that's a whoops. Let me. Oh, I forgot to close this. Let's. That's a nice kind of like more subtle sort of sunset, right? First of all, I hate sunsets. I think that I've, I've established that, but I'm gonna say it again. I hate sunsets. I think that sunsets in the back stuff, or it's like everybody does it. If you're gonna do it, make it interesting. Or else, why have you put a sunset in there? I don't want to stare at a piece from 2002. Okay. You can have a nice sunset in peace, but do it properly. Right? You can do this vibe. You can have this in there. Totally fine. If you wanted a nice lighter sky, a thing you could do is have it. So then it's like... Because right now what you're doing is you're mixing two different types of skies. Right? You can have that really dark sunset there. Or you can have like it's just about to fade into the night. Right? In which then it's kind of more like this right one or the other one or the other don't blend the two right this is the only time that that blue is going to show up in theirs right there's a lot there's a lot going on that's what i had to say mainly for the sunset oh i drew that on the wrong layer oh well regardless that's the main thing that's that's the thing that bothers me oh dear all right well i guess that's stuck there oh well Let's get to let's let's get to the Ooh these clouds. Sorry, I just noticed them. Ooh these clouds. Those are some good clouds, boys. Really makes me feel of Colgate toothpaste. I think these are minty fresh. All right. Clouds. <laughs> We've got clouds. All <laughs> colors. Thanks, Kay. All right. Clouds. You can do a couple things with clouds. Clouds, they don't necessarily have to be, like, perfectly fluffy. There's lots of different types of clouds, but at least make them look like clouds. I don't... No cloud is uniform like this. No cloud is uniform like this. If you have them in this straight rectangular, kind of like, oh, it's just like this. Just like this, besties. That's not... That doesn't show dynamism. It doesn't have anything to it. You can have clouds. You can have clouds just fine. Just don't make them the exact same shape all throughout you can have them cell shaded you can have them soft shaded i don't care just don't make them all the exact same shape all the exact same dynamic color you can even have them where it like they fade away like you can have it where it's like you know you start up here this is a this is a piece of advice i give to my students all the time if you're gonna draw be drawing in a cloud then what you can do is like you can like to emphasize like Uh, what's it called to emphasize the perspective you can have them like kind of fading into fading away into like the horizon line like this like you could have something like that if you really wanted to those aren't great but like never make them all the same size never do that never all right it looks strange also usually if you have the sunset underneath yes you can have it so that it's brighter on the bottom if you're gonna do it on top though if you're gonna make clouds don't make your highlight darker than the cloud color <laughs> please <laughs> i'm begging you <laughs> please oh am i bilingual no 
I am dying though. I'm sweating. I'm so. <laughs> I'm like. A reminder to everyone as well who is still asking about whether I am going to roast your work or not. The pieces have already been submitted. I am not touching your artwork. All right. So, we've only done the sky. <laughs> we've only done the sky. So. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I need to take a breather for a second. Let's, let's, let's. Let's take a look at this, shall we? Let's, let's, let's pick apart this anatomy. I am... I'm sweating. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's, uh, nope. Let's move these all over. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> I organized this page, not great. All right, let's see. Nope. Like, did I crop it by accident? No. D, please. Okay. No. I sounded like the Five Nights at Freddy's breathing sound for a second there. The man behind the slaughter core. Alright. I've had it's been so long stuck in my head for the past three days, guys. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Let's let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this anatomy really quick. Actually, I can spend a bit longer on this one. This is one of the funky ones. It's such a bop. It is. It's good. It's a good song. Like, I, I'm not knocking any Five Nights at Freddy's songs, because it's good. It's it's a good song. Alright. I do commend this person. I do commend you, Fox, for trying Four Sharpening. At the very least, you tried. Um, I'm gonna give you a gold star in Comic Sans that says you tried. Um, I'm gonna emphasize tried, though, because trying does not mean success. Right? <laughs> so let's Let's, let's, okay. Okay, you've got the torso here. First of all, there's, there's, so a lot of you are pointing out the obvious bits. I don't think you're noticing everything, though. So first of all, let's say we've got the torso here. Center of the torso, based on the chest, is right here, right? Based on the chest, it's right here. Also, the neck kind of goes directly into the whole body. It's like you've connected the, sh the neck to, like the shoulder muscles or like the i don't remember what this muscle is i know the scm is right here but i don't remember what this one is you've kind of connected the two and there's no structure left so all that's left is just kind of this strange like traffic cone kind of shape for the neck right here i hate that but we've got the front of the body right here and then based on the hip shape right here the center of the hips is right here so right now we've got this strange tilt that's happening here so the center of this chest is right here, but we've got both arms directly on the sides right here. This is a very awkward pose. This is a very awkward position. If you're going to have the body rotating, again, I commend you for trying to have the body do a twist. But if you're going to have the body twisting, you should have it so that everything is on opposites. Both of these arms are raising. You have this part of the body also it's like it's bent forwards if you have this section bent forwards right here right you're bending it right here so that it's like it's a very awkward try doing this pose yourself try doing this pose yourself you can exaggerate a pose just fine but the line of action is just extremely one way it goes like this it is the slightest curve it doesn't go anywhere if you wanted this pose to work one arm out the other one backwards have it so this side is stretched. Coil it like this. Then have this arm going upwards like this. And then have the hand like this. This arm going back here, holding the whip. 
and then you can have this leg upwards here and this one backwards this one should also be foreshortened if you're if this person if this person is running have this leg foreshortened too all right because this has no movement it's all it's a very strange it's a very strange curve that goes like this right don't like it this arm right here you have it so the shoulders downwards this forearm is right here and then the forearm, like, sorry, the, the bicep is here, the forearm is missing, and then you've added the hand right here. There's no wrist. We're all, it's, we're all bicep. You know, you know when people say it's like, oh, wait, I can't make that joke. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but if we have, I'm getting, I'm getting a bit too into this. So let's say we've got like this arm here. If we've got the bicep right here. If the bicep is coming down all the way down here, the top of the forearm should be right here. Like this. But then this hand would not be bent all the way back here. This hand could probably at max bend to like right here. At maximum, it'll probably bend right there. Or maybe a little bit higher. This is a really awkward foreshortened angle anyway. Is you have this arm facing forwards. And then this hand bending upwards like palm out. This is a very, very awkward foreshortened angle for this pose. It also makes no sense. I don't really know what I'm looking at here. I don't really get this pose at all. What's this hand doing? I'm not really sure. If you had one hand, if this person is running, let's say this person is running. I do this pose all the time where you have the one arm backwards during the action. First of all, if the person is running, torso should be facing forwards. This chest should be facing forwards. Then you have this one here. You can have it twisting a little bit backwards. If this hand is just about to whip, you can have it twisting backwards. But then you've got to make sure that everything else above is also twisting backwards. If you have one portion of the body that is twisting, it will affect everything else. So if you've got this portion twisting backwards, this arm should also be foreshortened. So if we have this arm going backwards here, you should be able to see the whole back of the hand right here. This whipping around, right? Just like that. And then this one... I don't know why this is down here. This is throwing off the center of balance. If you have one arm here, the other arm should be balancing it out up here by comparison. You can even have this person running. So like this, instead, the bicep is foreshortened and you have the forearm perfectly fine like this if this person is running like that. You could even do that. And then you'd have this knee upwards. And then this one back. This knee's actually all right. It's not too bad. And then this leg all the way back here. This should also be foreshortened though. Already feels more dynamic. This has a much nicer curve. It's a move. It's movement. There's movement. Once again, ladies and gentlemen and people in between and outside the Vendanker. Right? That means that this head, you can even have it so that like this side of the body's like here. You can have it so that the face is facing forward still. You could do that, but this very awkward like straight ahead feels very non-dynamic. So I would, it would be a lot better if you had it like, like a three fourth or seven eighth or something. <laughs> Ugh. I'm, I'm getting like. Ugh. Anyway. So we've done the background and the body. Let's move on to the thing that everybody is talking about, which is the hairline. I don't know what's going on here. Two things you can change. Okay, because everybody is saying that her hair is off. Thank you. How old is the artist? Uh, I'm not going to give away that information. If let's, everybody's saying that the hairline is off. No, 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 my friends. The face is off. Let's take a look at this really quickly. Let me just look at where the chin is angled and look at where, let's continue to trace this. The head is sideways like this. I, sh I should have used a black pen because it's all red and hard to look at, right? Look at where the chin is, trace that around the whole thing. 
it's not yeah it's not the hair it's the face everybody in here has been saying that it's the hair it's the face my friends so this face should be like tilted like another like 50 degrees <laughs> this face should be more like that also i don't know what's going on with the pupils in there i don't know what's going on with the pupils there is just something up with this whole thing here there's just something up with this i don't i don't understand what's going on here why does she have crosses in the middle of her eyes i'm not i'm not certain let's just get rid of that and because they're like dark black against this like bright gray it's super distracting like crazy distracting also, this nose is just slightly too high. If you moved it down here, oh, the, that's both the nose and the mouth. If you move the nose and the mouth downwards, there we go. You can have a high nose, but not that high. <laughs> All right, boom. Look at that. Already slightly better, All right? It wasn't the hair, it was the face. Is this not finished? Oh, this is a section here that's just unlined. All right, well, finish your pieces, please. Um, so we've covered that. <laughs> one more, one more, and it's the lighting. Right now we have this bright green right here and this bright brown right here. There is no extra shading attached to this. There is no extra shading attached to this. There is no extra anything attached to this, right? It needs more lighting. Right now, it's like you have the sunset in the background with no sunset -y colors. All right. Oh, I just noticed the stars. I'll get to that later. It's the sunset -y color, sunset -y colors with no sunset -y shading. Let's fix that. And you can do that in one easy step, my friends. And it is called a multiply layer. This belongs on everything. Just give it like a nice blue. Multiply shadow real quick. Alright, nice and easy. I'm not done, by the way. It's like we have like a little bit of a multiply here. We're not done with just the multiply because only adding this is not enough. Alright. It's awkward though because you have like this strange color that you've chosen for the sky. It's supposed to be sunset-y, but you haven't really picked which sunset it is. So I don't really know exactly what to pick here. So I'm just going off of what I'm assuming you were attempting to do. Alright, let's do this. Let's cover this entire thing in a shadow. And guess what also needs a shadow? The ground! The ground has no shading applied to it either. If you leave everything untouched, it will look like daytime. Please don't forget your shadows. Your shadows and your lighting, right? This will give it a nice different color here. Now, let's add back in that warmness that the sun is giving us. All oh, praise be the sun, right? Because we still have... This is golden hour, so we want a bit of that warmness back in there. This is still kind of meh. Like, it's not perfect, not even close. But it helps a little bit, at the very least. Without, with, shadow. Shadow is important. This shadow right here makes no sense. I would have just gotten rid of that entirely. You could even go even more intense with it. Let's say we even added like a really strong white rim light. Not even white, like just a really nice, like, like, it should be, like, a yellow. If we have, like, just this really intense rim light here, if you really wanted to make it more interesting, you can. You don't necessarily need this. I don't recommend this all the time, but you can do it, right? A little bit of extra white. Actually, it shouldn't be down here. But on the hair, yes. Without width. It gives it a bit of extra, that extra flair, right? Oh, the sun is a ring! Thank you for pointing that out. I didn't even notice that. Let's just color that back in there. There we go. Also, the sun should never have just a super hard edge. Make Blend that in.
All right. Lighting. Incredibly important. Learn your lighting. Please, learn to light your pieces. If there's no lighting, make sure that you are accounting for that. Don't put somebody in... Okay, it doesn't matter how much stylistic choice you decide to do here, right? If you decide that you're like, oh, I'm gonna put this character in a sunset that's like end of the day, you know, end of the day kind of shadows, right? And then you decide to put them in full daylight lighting, it's gonna feel awkward. It's like you decided to put like a, like a, like a piece through a rainbow filter and then there's just no color added to it, right? It doesn't matter how much style you have on it, it's gonna look incorrect. Like, that's just how it is, right? If you're- if you're not trying to make it, like, a certain way, there are things that don't look great. And there's, like, this color right here. This light? Look at the values. This is a darker gray than this. Technically, the values are not, like, super... Hang on. Let's... Let's... Let's do that. Let's check values. We haven't done that yet. Whoops. That's not what I wanted. Color. Yeah, look at that. See? This section of color right here is darker than this section of color. That's why it feels off. Is because this gradient is not within the correct value scale. Right? If you have a darker... If you were doing a sunset and it gets light then dark then light again you've done the sunset wrong that's the number one thing you've also just chosen like strange colors to go off of right you can honestly like you can see the difference between these two this sunset is so subtle because these two colors are the same value these colors however you can see that shade that gradient that shifts right these don't shift a lot right they're stuck within this one section, right? And it's not great. So, mindful of your gradients, mindful of these. I've spent so long on this one, let's move on. All right. My voice is killing me. I should have done voice warm up so far this. All right. And drink tea. I don't have the time to, to make tea right now. Alright. This piece. I decided to throw in a pretty alright one. A pretty, pretty, pretty darn alright one in here as well. This one, by contrast to the other ones, I didn't immediately kind of blink at. Okay? This one's not that bad. I quite like this one. But of course there's still stuff. To, to talk about here. First of all, they said I use no reference for the lighting. I can tell. I can tell. Right? You've got this rim lighting here. I see what you're trying to do. But it's awkward. You've made, like, this really awkward kind of, like... First of all, why is there... Like, why is your shadow perfectly aligned throughout this whole thing? You have this, which is the top layer of the hat. And this one, which is underneath. Why is there, like, almost any lighting on here at all? You should cover this up. Nothing there. You should have a little bit, maybe. Oh, wait, hang on. You should have a little bit, maybe, but it should not align with the top layer, right? Because these... This rim is underneath the hat, right? This top section right here? No. You've also got a lot going on with the texture. I think you could have dialed back the texture a lot. <laughs> oh, you know what? Here's a... This is a good example of cell shading where adding in your light doesn't work it's it's the, the thing with this one right these are pillars i'm assuming these are pillars and not bricks right what's happening here is you've curved this oh this is by peachy by the way sorry i just went straight into it peachy most peachy on tiktok she submitted this one and thank god she didn't say that i hate this piece she just said that uh, where is it? She just said that she used no ref reference for the lighting. Semicolon. Apostrophe. Parentheses. Right? We've got pillars here. Pillars! I know you want to. I know you want to curve that shadow. Don't. Keep them straight up and down. If you have a pillar, it is rounded. 
it's a rounded piece, but you don't want to curve it. If you curve it, it automatically makes the shape different, right? With this bent, it feels like I'm looking at a bent piece of paper with an awkward straight side at the other side, right? Look at that difference. It feels like it's less work, but it's the correct less work, right? Nothing too wrong with that. Oh, this is the wrong brush. Let's, there we go. I'm trying to add some of that texture back in there. Or replicate it a little bit. Right? Easy, easy, easy way, right? The shadows on IRL pillars do not curve. They don't. They just kind of stay there. If you wanted to make it realistic, you could, you know, curve it and have it be soft blended because you've got this soft blending down here, which by the way, if you're gonna have soft blending and cell blending, fine, you can have both, but don't have it just in one section because I barely noticed this. It was just there and I was like, oh, I guess they didn't color in, I didn't guess they didn't shade in this character. No, 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 they did. It's just that the shadow doesn't match everything else. So let's bring that back in there. Automatically, this feels a lot better. Because if you have these really harsh shadows for everything else, you're going to need the same harsh shadows for everything that's in there. Your shadows, your everything that you render needs to feel cohesive or else it feels like a disjointed piece, right? Or else it's kind of awkward. These shadows right here as well. This is behind. Color it color this you don't 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 just leave it this is why we use references don't color what you think if you don't know how to do a certain type of lighting don't try to do it off the top of your head pick up references if i don't know what lighting looks like i either take it from masters who do know how the lighting works or i just look at photos or i take the photo myself right don't just do it because you're like oh i don't know how to do this do it and do it with intention do i have this yes i do have the hikawi art phones from real life i've said this like 20 times all right this shadow right here the light comes from directly behind this person's back you have the directions of these shadows correct don't curve stuff if there is no curve straight edge straight edge easy already these shadows look 20 times better right already this shadow's at the wrong angle put it back here you could have it so it's more like this if you really wanted the shadows to be more like that you can but just make sure because these two are on equal playing fields they should not be super different from each other measure them out flip your canvas Figure out how that looks. Ooh, actually, I didn't flip the canvas. I didn't notice this. This chin's too high. I've heard some people who are like, I don't flip the canvas because I'm too scared to. Okay, so you just live with your mistakes then? Flip your canvases. Especially if you're doing a more serious piece and you're like, I don't want to look at my mistakes, so I'm just not going to flip my canvas. Don't do that. It's just hurting you. It is hurting you if you decide to do that. You've also forgotten the shadow on this guy right here. The, I'm assuming this is the blue that you use. Something like that. Actually, yeah, that looks like about right. You forgot the shadow on this funny little thing, the staff here. Without, with, better. I do appreciate you not shading in the backs of the ears. I appreciate that a lot. Because a lot of people, what they do with ears is that they will shade it all completely black. Don't do that. Especially if you want a more realistic shade, but you didn't add the ambient occlusion in there. So actually, you forgot a bit of shading over here. But you didn't add the subsurface scattering back in. Don't forget that either. Because ears, you can have light peek through ears. <laughs> oh, you forgot the shading on the hand, too. You forgot the shading on a lot of places. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Alright? I am praying that those wings are vestigial. Because if they are not, that person cannot fly. 
A, that person cannot fly. B, those wings do not have any articulation. If this person wanted to fly, these wings need to be massive. You gotta make sure that these wings fold all the way to the ground. If this person has the ability to fly. You have also completely forgotten the joints of the wings. Wings are similar to arms. If you've got an arm here, like this... It looks like this. Wings are just an extension of those hands, and that's the shape of a wing. You're gonna have one, two, three sections to a wing. This section can splay outwards, which is why it's similar to a hand, right? These wings are shaped like tringles. This does not work. That won't fly. That won't move, right? Make sure that you are properly shaping your wings so that they have articulation and can move and can fly this goes to every single one of you and if i see any of you decide to place wings on the lower back i will find you that's a joke i will not be finding any of you but if you place wings on the lower back of anything i will be severely disappointed all right okay i think we're good with this one I think we're good with this one for now. Make your whims ling wings more like limbs and less like a backpack. Well said, Zach. Well said. I know how hard Jesse is going on these. This is years of suppression. I hope you know this. All right. Number six. Number six. This one. By Jake or Jake Steals Steaks. He submitted these ones. He submitted, I think, six. Six different ones. It was all about the same. Why the long face, my friend? Why the long face? I do appreciate that even though you have eyes hidden behind the hair and you added a little bit of it, it's subtle to the point where it doesn't annoy me. So you know what? You get an A plus there, and I appreciate you for that, Jake. Thank you. On the contrary... I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in on this nose right here. We're gonna do a fun little thing right here. This actually isn't too bad if we flip it. It's not that bad. The nose, however, I don't really know what's happening here. It really feels like when, when I take a look at this, if we look at this shading, what I feel like this is, is that every single piece of this is a different sheet of construction paper. And I've slapped it all on top of here. These cheekbones are insane. This cheekbone right here is insane. It feels like this person's face is hollow right here. I actually do really like the palette. The palette's really nice. It's nice and subtle. The shading just irks me. It's it, This is an example of over-rendering, I think, where it, everything feels just rendered to a point where it doesn't feel like it's rendering with intention anymore and instead rendering with nothing but aesthetic in mind. And it's just not quite getting the forms right i was saying this to another because right here as well because you've added this light here which i know is the theme you've decided to just add light to the edges of every single edge that you have here this makes it so that it feels again like a piece of cardboard or a piece of the construction paper is being slapped on top of the jacket right it doesn't feel like it's a piece of the jacket it looks like they are all different sections right here as well this looks like it's a whole shape slapped on this entire section of face looks like it's a whole shape this nose looks like it's a whole shape right first of all when you're shading in noses you never want to really shade in the bridge of the nose that much this is too much shading with the bridge of the nose you should blend this in more blend this in more here the bottom of the nose if there's light at the bottom of the nose this shadow should not be this intense if there's light coming from below here this is not the shadows that you add to this face. If there is light from below, the shadow right here, top of the nose here. Uh, can I get this right? There is shadow at the top of the lip kind of here-ish. Top of the cheeks here as well. Bottom of the nose has some lighting on it. Something like that. But it's awkward because the the face anatomy itself is a bit awkward. If we draw in the crosshairs of the face, what we have right here is the nose is directly here. The eyes, if we have the whole head right here, the eyes are way up on the head. This is like a third into the top of the head. Then the nose is halfway, and then the mouth is like an eighth down. This measurements are a lot. This is a lot. That's... 
very, very long. I like drawing long faces. This is a thing that I do. I like drawing longer faced characters. That's a thing that I do, but make sure that everything stays in proportion, please. But this is a thing that I talked about with somebody who I was in, like, I, I, I did like a one-on-one -on -one with somebody and they asked what they could improve on with their shading. And I looked at their shading and they had no shading. They had occlusion shadows. And if you don't know what those are, occlusion shadows are shadows that are there not based on light. They're based on proximity. It is shadows that are just there um, and they are there no matter what. In game terms, you call that ambient occlusion and it's a thing that you bake into the texture so it will never change. And it's usually when objects are close to a wall or when they're like above something or like you add those in because those shadows will never change. That's what an occlusion shadow is. An occlusion shadow is something that will never change. So when you shade in something like this and you don't think of any lighting and you just decide to add shadows only in sections where things are closer or and then you just decide to kind of add like a like a like a random glow somewhere but you just kind of add in like shadows just in between sections or just in between things just when things are close in proximity there is no lighting here there are only occlusion shadows and it makes your entire piece feel flat by comparison because you have no shadows you have no shading you have no lighting right there is no lighting here there is just occlusion shadows right learn your lighting learn where things go on go right don't just add them because you can there are many things that you're supposed to do if i wanted to get a bit me meaner again i i hate these like light rims this is so like the thing is that you've put it against a shadow you put it right up against a shadow this is a technique that you use with metal but the thing is is that you've done it with everything you've also just randomly added these tiny highlights to everything which is like an attempt at lighting but the thing is, is that you have just added them in random positions and there's no intention behind it. You also have just like, there's just like these red, like the random, again, like the random highlights make everything feel like a paper cutout. Let's get rid of some of these highlights. Let's kind of tone these down a bit more. Whoopsie doopsie. Let's tone these down a bit more. Let's say that we just kind of took away this highlight here. And then up to the contrast between the shape here and this one here. These automatically already feel a bit more coherent. They feel a bit more one with each other. Connect the shadows to here. I know this is hair. This is a really awkward shape for hair as well. Because the ends of hair would not have shading like this. They would just be stuck like this. If you wanted to add shading to the ends of your hair... You need to make sure that it doesn't follow as if it's a 3D form, but as if the hair is flowing around. You can have sharper looking hair, but make sure that you are shading it as if it's hair and not like it's a 3D object. Like this light here, unnecessary. Get rid of it. You don't need it. You really, because you've got a couple of bits of sh soft shading right here. This is a forearm. It's round. Soften it out. Don't make it super hard. Without, with. Look at that. Already difference. You can even do this with the bottom of the hand because there's a bit of shadow right here. If you wanted to add lighting back in, what you could really do is get a whole layer. Again, multiply layer this bad boy. Oh, actually, that's the light source, so let's try to avoid that. Multiply layer this entire thing. And then add your lighting back in. should make this another layer this should be a soft white layer let's do that there we are so now these shadows and light sources have more intention you can even 
gonna add a bit to the back of this book bit here bit to the edge of the mouth here bit to the bottom of the nose or the bottom of the chin sorry and the bottom of the nose here maybe a little bit on the hair as well no actually the hair is covered with the sleeve it wouldn't do that right atmosphere atmosphere it makes it feel a little bit more concrete Do I want some kitchimkin? Sure, okay. Alright. <gasps> By the way, let me preface this. Half of what I am saying, like I am making jokes, that is what a lot of this is. None of the artists here, I think, should stop what they're doing. None of them. Like, some people are like, oh, you're doing roasts, that means you hate all of them and they should stop doing what they're doing. No, not at all. I'm saying you should practice. You should continue and work to what you want to do. Alright? I am mostly making jokes. That is mostly what's happening here. Right? Artists are at different levels. We're all at different levels. We're all at different points within our journeys as artists. Right? That never means that anybody should stop. Keep going. You will get better with time. You will notice these things more as you become a better artist. I promise you, a lot of the things that I'm pointing out now is stuff that I did when I was younger. I know it because I was you. <laughs> right? I know these things because I was you. I know these things because I was this. Right? I did do this thing. I did this. I'm gonna highlight every single edge of my shadow. I did that awkward hand thing. I, okay, there was one piece. If you all remember the stream where I redrew my art from when I was 11, there was one piece I could have picked where quite literally, I, um, I did the exact same thing. That hand bent way too far back. And there was foreshortening on that arm that I couldn't get right. I have done the exact same thing as every single artist here when I was younger and when I was less experienced. A roast and me critiquing you does not mean that you should stop. A roast and a critique means that you will... This is somebody now pointing it out to you. This is somebody that you are noticing. I was gonna pick that illustration of me bending the hand back, but then I saw the genocide one and I liked that one more. But... Everybody starts somewhere. Everybody has a point where they need to realize that being good immediately will not cut it. Being good immediately is not something that you will do. And that's fine. Alright. One piece is real. How long did it take me for, to be satisfied with my work? I think I've never hated my work, really. I used to say it all the time because everybody else was saying it. But I think I've just never... Like, how I've always seen it. It's like, I'd, I'd be I'd be very harsh on myself a lot. I still am. But I think there was a point when, like, I'm still harsh on my work now. But I've come to a point where I understand where my harshness is coming from. But I get a, I, I'm instead, I have a better relationship with that instead. And I think, like, once I hit, maybe I was, like, 18 or 19, is when I really started to be like, okay, this is, my work is going to be like this for a while. And that's fine. I'll just work harder. It's less, how, when did I become satisfied with my work? More, when did I learn to love challenge? That's when I started to become really satisfied with my work. Alright. Moving on. Thank you, once again, for everybody so far, for being a great sport. I appreciate you. If any of you want to contact me to get these files, or we will email them to you if you would like, with all the fixes and the... Um, comments on them, feel free. We can you message somebody on admin and we can get that back to you. Alright. <laughs> Comedy Cree! She submitted. I know I mentioned earlier in the stream, I was like, there's somebody here who submitted and was like, I was too, I'm always too lazy to do line art, so I submitted sketches. First of all, I'm gonna call you out on that because I mentioned it. Why would you ever just say that why would you tell on yourself like that now i'm just gonna like dig into you okay if you're too lazy to to do any line art and you decide to just add shading to these chicken scratch sketches then like what are you doing <laughs> first of all let's take this piece really quick let's do the fun little trick that i love to call which is just flipping the canvas let's take a look here let's take a look see besties all right first of all 
This learner, I see everywhere. This kind of thing. Oh, let's switch to my hard round because that's what this is. This thing right here, everybody does. That's like you decided to just like sketch like this. This is called chicken scratch. This is called feathering. Never line anything like this. I am, I am begging you. <laughs> I am begging you when you are sketching. Please never do this with your lines. Never feather like this. Your sketches will look so much better if you do single lines or like restated like single lines like this. This is cleaner. And this also makes this head looks awful, by the way. But this also makes it so that it's easier for you to know when you have messed up with your line work. It's easier for you to know if you have messed up with something else, right? Less is more. Less is more with your sketch. Right now I am staring at just like an intense amount of scribbling and I don't know what to think. This hair, by the way. This hair. These like just triangles. Am I looking at hair or am I looking at Sonic's quills? I'm not sure. Okay, when we have hair, hair has a flow. Okay, hair has a flow. Even if it is, even if it is just a little bit like more coarse, hair still has a flow to it. Make sure that you are adding that flow back in. Cause right now it's just like sharp pointed edges. There's no real place where it comes from, right? I am just staring at porcupine pit quills. You're also missing a section here. It feels awkward without it, right? So let's take a look at this anatomy really quick. take a look at this head so if we try to find the shape of this head right here which is like this why are the eyes on an angle that goes across the face like that why are why are why are we here and then we have the mouth on the side here. The nose is right here. I think the nose is the only correct placement. And then we have like the eyes and the sides here. Like this, right? Awkward. It's awkward. It's an awkward placement. And then the ears are like this on the side, right? You have the face. So the face is shaped incorrectly. And then you have the ears, right? Remember at all times, if you are drawing the face, the eyes should be on a straight across axis on the face. This is goes for every single face type. Then the nose would be here. These eyes are also huge. I guess I won't like, like I could say never draw your eyes this absolutely huge. Like you can if you want, I guess. But like, it's just, this, this feels like it's taking up the whole head. So, like, if I was to draw eyes like these, it would be more like that, I guess. And make sure they are on the correct axis. Like, if I'm drawing at the head with the shape of the axis, and then the mouth would be right here. If we wanted this smirk, then one side can be higher than the others. Alright. But right now, it just feels like everything is off kilter. The easier thing to do is just shift the entire shape of this face. Also, these glasses. Oh, there's glasses. Oh, dear. All right. If we have glasses, please make sure that both the lenses are the same size. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. If you are drawing out glasses, if you're working digitally, draw them on a separate layer first. I still do this. It makes your life 20 times easier. Just draw them on a separate layer and then decide where you want to place them, right? If we wanted to keep the shape of this face, which I don't think I will, I'll just kind of shrink this down a little bit. If we wanted to keep the same kind of like, you know, this sort of vibe to it. <laughs> also, when you're drawing in lips, if you draw the lips in like this, please don't. It looks awkward. Oh, I should have done this on another layer. Hang on. Let's 
I shouldn't have just drawn completely over it. Hang on. Let's say that we switch this off. Also, there is just shading on every single edge. This is what I'm bringing back to the idea of, you know, occlusion shadows. There is nothing but occlusion and there is no other shading. Just deciding to add shadows does not instantly make a piece better. It has the ability to make it worse. Like, I'm letting you all know that. Going like, oh, I sketched this. I'm going to add in shading now. Just adding shading in does not make the piece look better. I promise you. It has the ability to make it look 20 times worse. All right. And let's say we added the eyes back in there. Hang on. I'm going to look at the original eyes. Say if we've got like, whoops, we've got like those same sharp eyeliner. I wear eyeliner like this, so I understand. If we've got, whoops. Again, if we've got like kind of the general axis of the face right here. Oh, really, if this is halfway down the face, the eyes should be right here. And the nose should be down here, kind of, and the mouth should be kind of down here. We really wanted that to be how we're going with this. So we've got the nose here. None of these redraws are great, by the way. I'm just doing, trying to move fast because we are coming close to the end, actually. And you wanted that half-lidded kind of look. And if you wanted those eyelashes to go off the face, I do that anyway, so it's fine. And then you wanted those glasses, which remember, if we want glasses, we want those glasses to be the same height, same shape on both sides of the face. They might be angled differently, They will not be, you know, bust out that chin there more, right? This isn't great regardless. It's not good anyway. But the, this is where your face, facial shapes, or face, face, facial elements will sit on the face if we decide to put them down there. Because right now they're kind of just all at very awkward angles. Remember, if you want it, they will be directly across the face directly there's certain measurements please don't draw your bangs like this for the love of god i promise you it looks so much better if you just draw it as one big shape if you want straight cut bangs it locks better the neck is a bit too long so you might want to shorten that and then bring it up more like that regardless though oh and then the ears if you're gonna have ears make sure that they align with where the original ears go as well this ear should be more down here if you really wanted that. Like that as well. Okay. You can tell I'm getting tired because I'm like, I'm starting to lose steam. Okay. I think we've got like two more. So I'm going to zoom through because one of them's not that bad. I'm just going to like point out a couple things and then we'll be good. Okay. Actually, neither of these are that bad. Okay. This one. Okay. This one is an example of where the shading does not match, or the rendering does not match anything else. The rendering just does not match anything else. This kind of feels like when I walk into a nature reserve and I see a mural of animals on the wall. That's kind of just how it feels to me. Then you look at it and you're like, what medium did they use for that? It was like a spray can that they hope that they tried to like carve out with like a, like a paint, a flathead paintbrush. And you're like, oh, well that's kind of awkward, right? It's, for me, how what's the biggest jarring portion here? Oh, this is by Turtle Cakes. Uh, Turtle-Cakes-Artist on Instagram. She very graciously submitted this one. Thank you for your submissions. Welcome to Nebraska Sign True. <laughs> very true. But these this fur... Is so heavily rendered. It's 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 a great color choice. Your color choices are great. They're fantastic. But the 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 color of this, like it's all so highly rendered. And then you have these super sharp edged black lines. First of all, 
I, a lot of people will say, like, never use black line work. I say don't use... I say you can use black line work, but make sure it matches, right? Right now, you have this super dark black line work, and it matches absolutely nothing, right? You have it... This super dark black line work, and it adds... Because this is so highly rendered, it's so jarring. It's like I'm looking at, like, you, you added the line work afterwards. Like, this feels like it should be a painting. It shouldn't be a... It shouldn't be a... It should not be like a like a lined piece at all. This should be just shaded, and you should rely on nothing but like shadows and color for this to work, right? Because like without the line work, it feels less harsh. It feels it's because it's so harsh right now. It's so unnecessary. It's like and because, like, again, I mentioned you don't need shadows, you don't necessarily need shadows on anything, but because of how you've rendered this, this needs shadows. You have no shadows on the ground here. You've got no shadows on the ground here. There's no overarching, cohesive, co like... Here's the thing that every digital artist does, right? They take a layer, they set it to, like, overlay or multiply, and they add on a layer of color, like this. Like so. You can do that. That's with overlay. And you can do this with multiply as well. Already the colors feel just so much more put together. Because of adding a multiply layer on top. Now they all have a unified hue that gives them that. Because right now without it, it feels super disjointed. This green is too bright. This brown is too bright. Right? Without it, this green is super disjointed with the brown. It's more harmonious if you add in that orange back in there, right? This feels a lot nicer with the colors, right? With that added on overlay and multiply, right? You can even choose just a multiply layer. Just the multiply actually works just fine. It darkens it, which is why I'm like, maybe you don't want the multiply on there. But like, you maybe you have the multiply and the overlay and the both of those do the same job. Right? Gives it a bit of cohesion, makes it a lot nicer. But yeah, if you're gonna add in line work, if you're gonna add in line work to a piece that is very heavily rendered, make sure that you are blending that line work back into the piece, right? If you have like an area right here, say we've got this, this uh, lovely satyr's hair. If we've got this right here, if you wanna keep that line work in there, You're gonna want to color that line work so it's not as jarring as before all right obviously i don't have the line art layer so i can't do that for you perfectly but color those lines back in and suddenly it's not as harsh on the eyes anymore all right black colored like if you same with the wolf here the thing is is that i know that you're using the black line work to like add contrast to every single one of the creatures but the re but the fact that you need to rely on those black line on that black line work to make that contrast between the creatures is what's hurting you. Your lighting should do that for you. Your color choices should do that for you. I also don't know why there's just a spattering of dark right here. I guess this is a shadow, but it makes it awkward to look at. Let's actually just fix that so you can see the snout of the wolf a bit better. Oops. I was wondering why that wasn't working. It's because I still had the multiply layers on. All right? Your lighting should do that for you. Your coloring should do that for you. This is also creating a tangent right here. We have the pattern that lines up with the curve of a wool snout. Not excellent. Not great. All right. What else can I say within this minimal amount of time? I could get really nitpicky with the anatomy, but I don't feel like it. But yeah. Oh, if you're gonna have something go back in space, this should be like a like a deeper, darker kind of brown back here instead of like a. Also, have it so there's more trees. Right now, you just kind of got like just a few trees in front. Draw more trees. Make this forest look full. There are three trees in here right now, and it needs more. Or there's like five, 
add in more trees make it feel like a full forest right when you're drawing in background elements as well those things should fade away you shouldn't have them so that they're like super bright saturation you shouldn't have it so it's like super super in your face or anything they should be fading away into the background blur it change the the, the blending do something with it right because having it all directly just like this too too busy far too busy if i just really quick hang on let's let's do the thing here i'm not even gonna like really crazy do this oh Oh shoot, wait, okay, hang on. Let's see. Just did this on thing really quick. Where I just kind of very quickly select a good chunk of the background. I'm not doing this perfectly, you can tell. Let's say I just selected a big chunk of this background. And then if I just did a fun little thing called a Gaussian Blur. Boom. Less noticeable. Less in the front. Brings the characters up front. It's still too bright. It's still... That green is still too unnaturally green. If you want to make green of trees, by the way, never use just straight green. Because this is so green. Bring it more to the yellow. That feels more natural, right? That's a little bit less intense, I think. Obviously, you want to shade it in, but I don't have time for that, right? Blur it. Makes your life 20 times easier. Makes it a lot better. All right. Moving on. We got one more. We might be a little bit over time, Joanne. I apologize. All right, last one. Keeper Grave Ave. Keeper Grave Ave. Keeper Grave Ave. He submitted this one. Uh, his description caught my eye where he went, I was going through the D&D monster manual to draw a bunch of things. So I immediately was like, oh, I want to see more D&D monsters. So I took a look through them. Not the worst. Not too bad. D&D 1E monsters be like. This is the B here for those who do play D&D. Now, I cannot tell if this is supposed to be scales or rosacea, but make sure that when you are drawing scales... Yeah, I'd be here. I don't know how to pronounce it. I apologize. Thank you, Oslo. That's how you spell it. Um, when you're drawing scales in, less is more, please. Less is more. When you are drawing in scales, right... If you decide to add in, like, these snake scales, sure. The thing is, the, the interesting thing with this one is that they have chosen... He's cho Sorry, he's chosen to work with lines alone. I'm a really big fan of line alone work. So then that means what, what he's stuck with is he doesn't have color to rely on. He doesn't have value to rely on. He only has line work. Which means that I cannot use lines or... Or I can't use color or shading as a solution. So what you need to do instead is you are relying on your lines alone to work with things. Right? Putting in this much texture in... There's a, there's a simple little thing that I was told by an old professor of mine. And he was like, if you add in so much detail, it'll feel like there's none at all. Right? You have added so many little circles in here. It feels like there's the, there's no detail. It feels like it's just a busy hive. It, they look like hives. It looks like hives, right? These don't look like scales, right? It looks like you rushed. And people can tell when you rush, right? Scales have a pattern to them. If you are doing, like, snake scales, snake scales are a very specific pattern. Let me look that up really quick. Because I can kind of show them off really quickly. Snake scales are rounded, but they still overlap each other, right? If you look at snake scales, they look like this, right? Snake scales overlap each other. They're rounded, but they will still overlap. You can't just draw a bunch of circles next to each other and expect that to look like scales, especially with dark black line work. You need to just add in 
a proper kind of scales like this a spattering of scales but don't draw so many to the point where it feels like too much draw in a couple draw in more around the edges don't just spatter them around if you have more scale texture around the edges and then leave the center blank you automatically have you know given people the idea that scales are there less is more less is more there's too much there's too much going on here cross hatching please don't just draw straight lines for cross hatching you're taught that i know you are i know you're just taught that please do not if you are drawing in a snake's tail it is curved this thing has curves to it if you are hatching match the hatch to the curve of the form this makes it so that it feels like a form and not just a flat surface right if you decide to just put in lines here first of all this makes no sense don't put like get rid of that but there's if you just decide to throw in a bunch of straight lines cross contour super true k that's what it is called but if you have like just a bunch of like straight flat lines you can even have it cross hashed cross contour where like if you curve in another direction of lines that also follows the shape this makes it look even more like the form that it's supposed to be following. Let's say if we took like a donut. That's the one that everybody does. If we draw the curves of this donut. Right? We can tell the shape of that donut. Therefore, our cross hatching our hatching should match these curves so that the form is shown off if you decide whoopsie doopsie what happened there if we decided if i just decided oh i'm gonna shade in this donut and just use straight lines the form is gone we've gotten rid of it it no longer exists we've decided to throw it to the ether right <laughs> but all right it's 601. Thank you to all the artists who submitted. That is, let me read them off again. That is Void Tribe, Snappy, Pasty Soap, Fox, Peachy, Jake, Comedy Cree, Turtle Cakes, and Keeper. Thank you all so, so much for submitting your work. I highly encourage you to keep going. All of you have great potential. All of you have great work. Please just continue what you were doing. Like, ignore a lot of my jokes. <laughs> I tried to throw in as much critique in there as I could proper proper concrete critique in there as well as the unnecessary criticism right please keep going please keep drawing you are all great and i really appreciate you all deciding to submit your work to this because that takes a lot of bravery it takes a lot of um especially because all of you chose to let me roast you as hard as you can um it took a lot of bravery it took a lot of strength for you to do that so i applaud you thank you not all artists could do that um and everybody who's in the chat, do not think that I haven't been watching you. Don't be mean. A lot of you have egos that you need to calm down. Remember, they all, we are all learning. We are all beginner artists to an extent. We are all artists who are still learning. We are all artists who... This should not be a race. It is a journey that we all go on together. Right? Don't be salty because you weren't here. Right? There were over 300 submissions. Um, but yes, regardless, please, thank you so, so much for joining once again. Um, if you liked what you saw, feel free to subscribe. Streams happen every single week, Fridays at 4 p.m. Um, there is no piece that will be up on the Discord, of course. If you were one of the people who I critiqued and roasted today, feel free to get in touch with admin. I can send over the working files for you if you would like any of your, um, same email, um, or actually, hang on. Um, you know what? I'll email each of you individually myself. Um, but I will I will give you back those working files if you would like them. Thank you to all of you who submitted. Um, Sunday streams are coming up, though. Please join us on Sunday. Um, I believe it is Vanessa who will be here on Sunday. So please join us for that stream as well. Um, I believe she was here last week in my stead. So thank you to her. Um, 
but yes, every Friday, 4 p.m., every Sunday, we'll be here once again. Um, but thank you all so, so much for joining. If you like what you saw, again, subscribe. This is all the free stuff, but if you would like my working files, you are going to have to join YouTube and Patreon membership for as little as, like, five bucks a month. And you can get all these fun little things, members only chat and critique, art files, pre-release video access, and monthly live class recording so join over there come join us come say hi um the stream that is coming up on sunday let me take let me take a look see here sunday is drawing eyes we'll be drawing vanessa will be drawing eyes with you so sunday streams are gonna be a little bit more beginner friendly a little bit more basic so feel free to pop into those if you would rather have more um you know just kind of back to the basics art pieces I will be back next week. Backgrounds. We will be drawing backgrounds once again. So I'll be going over my basics of that. A um, little bit more difficult. So Fridays will be slightly more difficult. Sundays, Sundays will be slightly more simple. But yes. Thank you so, so much for joining everyone. And I will see y'all next week. Au revoir. Bye-bye.